All right, imagine scientists came up with the longevity drug. The therapy is here, yay, the moment that you waited for has come, so now you start taking this drug. Or it can be a gene therapy, it can be a stem cell therapy, it doesn't really matter what kind of therapy. So the point is that you start taking it and nothing is really happening. You cannot tell the difference. Uh, there are no obvious changes in the mirror. You don't um, really feel much better. So basically nothing is going on, uh, at least not uh, that you can uh, definitively say that, oh, take a look, uh, like I have a third leg or something. No, nothing of that sort. You basically remain the same. So how do we deal with this problem? How do we uh, measure those biological changes? Well, the answer is easy. It's the biomarkers of aging. The, those we actually need to come up with before the longevity therapy would be invented, um, or at least proven to be effective, because that is the only way, in my opinion. And I think it's the cornerstone of biology of aging in general. So if we know a way to extend lifespan, how do we show it in long-lived animals and people are really really lonely lived animals we cannot really run a trial which lasts like 80 years old right because if you compare an experimental group that would take a drug and a control group which would be oh you and if the drug is really working then you will be waiting 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 and then you die because the drug is working and you uh, were not taking it all the time so in order to solve this problem uh, we have to come up with a set of parameters that would serve as proxies uh, of our aging mechanisms. So we can uh, take a look at the changes in those parameters and make conclusions about what's happening within our bodies. So uh, those aging biomarkers, uh, in my opinion, should include everything that's already measured in the clinic, obviously. Plus, on top of that, it would be really nice to um, take a look at uh, a set of aging-specific uh, things, oh, well, say the rate of, of wound healing, um, the number of DNA damage uh, foci within our cells, uh, all of those things. Plus, additionally to that, it would be really great to uh, take a look at more uh, kind of a, a bigger picture here um, um, and include comprehensive parameters such as transcriptome, proteome, and metabolome um, into um, account. So a transcriptome is basically uh, all of the RNAs that are inside our cells. The proteome is all of the proteins and uh, metabolome uh, includes all of the uh, small molecules that are circulating um, uh, in our uh, bodies. So by measuring those and by determining the levels at each time point, we can see, oh, okay, so this thing is going up and then we will know what that actually means in terms of our biology because we would know the um, baseline. Uh, this means we will measure ourselves um, for a while, we will establish the sort of normal youthful levels of all of those parameters and then upon the introduction of that intervention, that longevity therapy, well, let's say a diet, a longevity diet, uh, just, uh, just an example, we will then see, aha, uh -huh, so we see the parameters for example, of chronic inflammation are going down slightly bit by bit. So that's a good sign. And uh, uh, we can uh, take a look at many other things like that and uh, draw the con conclusions and actually say, okay, so this thing actually slows down aging mechanisms. This is what we want, and I think the biomarkers of aging are the most crucial thing. It's a cornerstone of aging research right now.